everybody. Adam here with So Wizard Podcast. This was originally supposed to be an episode of The Commute, but I did it on the way home from work, and the sun was right in the lens of the camera, freaking the whole thing out. It would have given you a seizure if I had posted it. It actually hurt my eyes trying to edit it for a couple minutes. So we're going to do it this way. I want to talk about HBO's The Outsider. I normally try not to have The Commute, or whatever this is going to be, just me reviewing things that I've been watching, because I feel like I'm doing that enough in other ways. But I'm so happy to be in this time of good Stephen King adaptations. Not all of them are hits. Uh, Pet Cemetery was an odd choice, but at least they tried something new, and it wasn't a horrible movie all the way through. It Chapter 2 wasn't quite as strong as It Chapter 1, but it was still pretty good. They should have done it uh, Lord of the Rings style and just made it all at once and then released it in two parts. That way you wouldn't have had the weird bobblehead Instagram filter face kids, but that's neither here nor there. The Outsider is a new show on HBO, and in a lot of ways it's the creepiest Stephen King property in a while. If you haven't been watching or if you haven't read the book, which I recommend both, but I guess do one then the other. The Outsider starts off by following Terry Maitland, who's played by Jason Bateman, a well-liked small-town teacher. He also coaches the uh, Little League team, is a member of the community, he's pretty much an all-around good guy, and he is accused with a ton of evidence of a horrifically brutal murder of a child. The Outsider doesn't really pull its punches, so if you're squeamish or sensitive, skip over that part, because I think you'd be able to handle the rest of the series. Um, they don't go into great detail murdering the kid, but they show enough that I feel like that warning is not out of place. Detective Anderson, I'm blanking on his first name right now, played by the always great Ben Mendelsohn, and I gotta say it's really nice to see Ben Mendelsohn playing a role that isn't villain makes a big show of arresting Terry Maitland in front of the whole town. They lay the evidence out. They have this amazing case against him. It's looking pretty cut and dry. Where's the story? The defense comes, the Maitland lawyer and uh, Terry's wife, comes up with just as much, just as strong, just as convincing evidence as to how Terry could not have done it, including a video that clearly shows him 70 miles away at the exact time of the murder with other people talking at a conference for teachers. This one incident kind of starts to unravel the entire town. Well, the story does focus mostly on the Maitland case and some of the ripples going out, and it's just so well done and handled with such care, and being that it's Stephen King, you know that, of course, there's some kind of... Everything isn't as it seems. Weird elements to it. Uh, I had read the the novel, so I'm trying not to give anything away, even though the series is only three episodes in, so I can't exactly spoil the series, but it seems like it's staying pretty true to the source, so I'm trying to pick my words carefully here. I think everyone should be watching this show and or reading the book, but definitely watch the show, because watching a show is easy. Events lead to Mendelssohn's character, Anderson trying harder to uncover the case, and they bring in Holly and Asari. Again, I'm blanking on the character's last name, and I don't know the actress's name, but she's very good. If you're a Stephen King fan, then you know that it is all connected, and Holly is also a character in the Mr. Mercedes trilogy. The show is very well made. It's very well shot, and the camera work is interesting in the way that they can show you far back being detached, feeling you're a member of the town, looking in on this insane thing that's going on that you've never seen the like of before in your little corner of the world, and also getting right up close and personal to the point where you feel almost uncomfortably voyeuristic at these really intricate, deep character moments. It's a really nice contrast, the back and forth, and it never feels obnoxious or too obvious, just really well done. My one complaint with the series is that it is too dark, and I don't mean that thematically or in tone. Sorry if you can hear that noise, the cat is trying to break into the closet. Uh, it is literally too dark. We're in this age of great quality TVs and high definition everything, and 4K video is all very affordable for people, and 
basically everyone has a flat screen, plasma LED, OLED, whatever you have. TVs are kind of better than they ever have been. Let's see some picture. Let's see something. I fully get it with a horror type series, a thriller. Some things take place at night. You're not going to have the clearest picture. Some of the unknowing is the point. But there's other times where it's the middle of the day and they're sitting on their front porch and you can barely see what's going on. Of course, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it does get frustrating. That one small thing aside, we're three episodes into The Outsider. It's on every Sunday night. Uh, it's only been on for two weeks. They launched two episodes and then one episode just to kind of get this, the ball rolling. Uh, that being said, thanks for watching. I guess not thanks for taking this ride with me because that got all screwed up. Uh, check out The Outsider. Also, make sure you listen to So Wizard Podcast every week wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to go to SoWizardPodcast.com for reviews, recommendations, merchandise, and more. So Wizard Podcast can be found at Patreon, patreon.com slash SoWizardPodcast, where for a very little bit you can monetarily support the show. It helps the main crew get around to the cons and everything. More content coming there. Joe is working on his own series that should be absolutely hilarious. He just suffered through the Playmobil movie for everybody, so help him out. Also, subscribe to the channel. I've been working on a lot of things. The Walking Dead VR game finally came out. People love that Comic-Con footage. I'm going to be diving in from the beginning, going all the way through. I'm going to be finishing the Vader Immortal playthrough series, so that's going to be a lot of fun. We love hearing feedback. Leave something in the comments or drop us a line on social media. All the events can be found after the show. Thanks again.